like I do. Wake yourself up, don't miss out this time. Cause we're outside, drawing lines. But I guess you don't need it. I guess you don't. Ryan Hammers and Paul Garrity are two surfers from Florida preparing for the trip of a lifetime. Their goal is to surf every state on the East Coast, from the warm sandy beaches of Florida, all the way to the cold rocky coastline of Maine. They had recently graduated college and were looking forward to one last surf trip before moving on with their careers. Paul had studied aviation in college and would be starting an internship at the local airport when he returned. Majoring in photography, Ryan never passed up an opportunity to add more photos to his portfolio. The trip from Florida to Maine would be nearly 2,000 miles, so the guys chipped in and bought a 1962 Ford Falcon van. The guys knew that between the long, flat spells of summer, in the cold nor'easters of winter, hurricane season would be their best chance for good surf. Big tropical storms in the Atlantic Ocean can send good waves up the coast for many days at a time. It was late summer and nearing the peak of hurricane season and the guys were ready to get on the road. Yeah! Starting their trip camped along the banks of the St. Johns River in Northeast Florida, the guys looked forward to exploring the East Coast and surfing spots they had never surfed before. There was already a tropical storm brewing out in the Atlantic, and they decided to make their first stop at St. Augustine, Florida, the oldest city in the United States. Ryan and Paul had surfed many big days at the fishing pier in St. Augustine Beach, but today would not be one of them. There was no sign of the newly formed Hurricane Francis and it could be days before any swell would make it to the coast. With the tide backing out and taking the small swell with it, they decided to leave Florida and start moving north on their journey to Maine. Crossing the Florida border into Georgia, they were not sure what they were going to find. On a map, Georgia looks promising for finding surf, with lots of barrier islands along the 100-mile coastline. Pulling off at the first exit towards the coast, the guys drove down to the beach to get their first look at surf at Jekyll Island, Georgia. Not sure whether they are in a good spot for surf, Ryan and Paul found a local that told them Jekyll Island doesn't get much in the way of waves. He had lived there for more than 30 years, and in all that time, he couldn't recall anyone ever surfing Jekyll. Wanting to get a better view of the coast, the guys found a pilot and took a guided air tour of the southern Georgia coastline. It turns out that the shallow waters along the Georgia coast drag all the power and size out of a wave long before it has a chance to reach the shore. With no sign of any swell from Hurricane Francis and still a long way from Maine, the guys hopped in the van and drove north. Along Georgia's northeast border sits the city of Savannah. Savannah. 
Savannah is Georgia's oldest city, and the guys could not pass up the chance to do a little sightseeing along the historic Riverwalk. Ryan took his camera with him, hoping to add some new photos to his portfolio. And Paul was on the lookout for postcards. His background in aviation had taken him all over the world, and he always made it a point to send his family a postcard from the places he visited. As their first day in Georgia came to a close, the guys set up camp just east of Savannah at Tybee Island. Overnight, an early season nor'easter came through, blowing in some choppy surf. Not wanting to leave Georgia without catching some waves, Ryan and Paul paddled out at the Tybee Island Pier. Well, I thought everything was my fault. I turned on the lights before it got dark. Oh yeah, your trip came right on cue. But you were right, it's not me, it's you. When I got back, I had to figure it out. Laughing at myself out loud. Well, I feel much better when the wind changes direction. Well, I feel much better when. Hoping that their luck would improve as they traveled further north, they loaded up the van and got back on the road to Maine. Driving north and into some better weather, the guys made their next stop at Folly Beach, South Carolina. Folly Beach is a narrow barrier island just east of Charleston on South Carolina's central coast. On its north end, Folly Beach is so narrow that any major storm washes out the main road. For over 40 years, local surfers have been calling this spot the washout. But today, the weather was anything but stormy. The surf was small, and there was still no sign of any swell from Hurricane Francis. the first signs of swell from Hurricane Francis finally arrived. The waves were a little bit bigger than the previous day, and the sets were a little more consistent. With Hurricane Francis 400 miles southeast of Folly Beach and closing in on central Florida, Ryan and Paul had a feeling that the best waves would be heading due north, away from the storm, and passing by the South Carolina coast. They decided to test their luck and drive north. Stopping off at Long Beach, North Carolina, and already into some better waves, the guys knew they'd made the right decision. Separated from Hurricane Francis by more than 500 miles, the weather was great. The air and water temperature were in the mid 80s and the winds were blowing straight offshore. Part of southeastern North Carolina is the city of Wilmington. Located along the northern banks of the Cape Fear River, Wilmington has weathered more than its share of hurricanes over the years. But today was quiet here as Hurricane Francis was over 500 miles away.
Headed downtown, Ryan and Paul went to meet Ian Balding. They had first met Ian one winter when Ian was on a surf trip in Florida. Ian grew up surfing in New Jersey, but after college moved south to be closer to his girlfriend. Now settled down in Wilmington, Ian owns a company that renovates old homes in the historic district. This gives him the flexibility to go surfing when the waves are good. With Ian, the guys headed over to Masonboro Island, a spot that can be really good during hurricane season. It's an uninhabited island just off the coast from Wilmington, accessible only by boat or by making the long paddle across from the mainland. Even though the island is uninhabited, many surfers still consider Masonboro their home break. One such surfer is talented North Carolina native, Matt Gilligan. After a good day of surf, Ryan and Paul were ready to explore more of the North Carolina coastline. Having to stay behind in Wilmington to finish a house, Ian suggested that the guys head north towards the Outer Banks and the Cape Hatteras National Seashore. Cape Hatteras is a pretty well-known spot for good waves, but it was still a six-hour drive up the coast. Not wanting to miss any waves along the way, the guys pulled off the main road an hour north of Wilmington making their next stop at Topsail Beach. The winds turned on shore later in the afternoon, sending them further north to the crystal coast of North Carolina. Still a few hours from Cape Hatteras, the guys set up camp at Fort Macon State Park. The next morning, the guys headed down to the beach by the campsite to check the waves. The winds were blowing offshore, and the swell from Hurricane Francis was at its peak.
After their best day of surf so far, Ryan and Paul were ready to stay put for the night at Fort Macon. They had already traveled over 600 miles through four states and were now within 1,000 miles of the main border. There was a new hurricane moving west out of the southern Atlantic and the guys were looking forward to catching some more good waves when they drove north to Cape Hatteras. In the morning, they drove the van an hour east to catch the ferry that would take them to the Outer Banks. After a two-hour ferry ride, they drove another hour north to the Cape Hatteras National Seashore. Dear Mom and Dad, greetings from the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Just wanted to drop you a brief note to say hello and tell you that our trip is going really well. We arrived yesterday in Cape Hatteras, and since Hurricane Francis moved inland, there wasn't much surf left. We headed north through the Outer Banks, and we stopped to get a look at the Wright Brothers Aviation Memorial in Kitty Hawk. Ryan wasn't as excited as I was about seeing some good aviation history, but he did enjoy the Orville and Wilbur action figures that I bought for him to play with. With the waves being small, Ryan snapped some photos to add to his portfolio. We heard Hurricane Ivan is clearing the western tip of Cuba and it should send some good waves into the Gulf of Mexico. It's a long drive back, but we'd hate to miss out on good hurricane surf in the Gulf. So it looks like we'll be heading home to Pensacola. I'll see you all soon. Over and out. Love, Paul. Mama! They had driven 18 hours straight from the Outer Banks of North Carolina down to Florida's western panhandle and Paul's home in Pensacola. The next morning, the weather took a turn for the worse as Hurricane Ivan began moving towards Pensacola. Ryan and Paul faced a small window of opportunity for catching good surf before the weather became too bad and beach evacuations became mandatory. They made a call to their buddy, Graham Wade, out on Pensacola Beach. The surf near his house was already blown out, but Graham knew of a spot that might be protected from the wind. Ryan, Paul, and Graham headed west from Pensacola to Gulf Shores, Alabama. Graham is a straight-A student at his high school, but still finds time to surf competitively in and around Florida. But his main goal after graduation is to go on to film school and make surf movies. Alabama Point doesn't break all that often, but when the winds are right and there's a big storm in the Gulf, it's not a bad place to be.
Later in the afternoon, Ivan began bearing down on the Florida Panhandle and the Alabama coast. Evacuations became mandatory and any chance of finding good surf was gone. That evening, Ivan was upgraded to a Category 5 hurricane. Ryan and Paul knew they had to get back on the road if they were going to make it to Maine. Dude, it's seriously getting bad out there. Got, I know. We gotta get out of town. They're closing the bridges in 15 minutes. Leaving Pensacola, the guys drove north, getting as far away from the storm as they could. Later that night, Hurricane Ivan slammed into the Florida-Alabama border, packing winds of 130 miles per hour and waves up to 50 feet. After an exhausting drive, the guys arrived at Virginia Beach, Virginia. It had been a chaotic couple of days that had taken them nearly 2,000 miles from the Outer Banks of North Carolina to surfing in Alabama and escaping a major hurricane. They were still over 600 miles from Maine and yet another tropical storm had formed in the Atlantic. They were looking forward to scoring some more good waves on the northeast leg of their trip, but first Paul needed some sleep and crashed in the van while Ryan paddled out south of the Rudy Inlet in Virginia Beach. With the water temperature being noticeably colder than it had been in the southeast, Ryan was ready to get back in the van and cross the Chesapeake Bay into Maryland. day that started in Virginia Beach, the guys were glad to be camped at Assateague Island, Maryland. They'd driven across the Chesapeake Bay and up the eastern shore, even scoring some clean little waves just steps away from their campsite. The next day, they planned to drive north to the local surf shop in Ocean City, Maryland, to try to find out the latest on the new storm in the Atlantic.
According to the owner of the surf shop, the new tropical storm had officially become Hurricane Jean. The storm was moving towards Florida, and the swell was on the way to Maryland. In the meantime, the surf was pretty small, but the owner of the shop knew of a spot that broke well at high tide. With high tide still being a few hours away, they decided to check out some of the fun and games along the Ocean City Boardwalk. With the tide moving in, Ryan and Paul paddled across the Ocean City Inlet to a spot called The Wedge. The next day, the guys stopped off in Delaware at a spot just north of the Indian River Inlet. With conditions being less than ideal, the guys caught the ferry across the Delaware Bay into New Jersey. There they met up with Graham Wade's uncle, Brian Hajeski. Brian informed them Graham's school was closed because of the damage from Hurricane Ivan. Graham would be catching a flight out of Pensacola and arriving in New Jersey the following morning. They should be in for some good waves the next few days, as Hurricane Jean was still out over the open ocean, sending swell toward the Jersey Shore. They would stay with Brian for the night and hit it first thing in the morning. After picking up Graham from the airport, the guys drove down to Avalon along the South Jersey Shore.
After surfing in Avalon, Graham showed the guys some pictures from the aftermath of Hurricane Ivan. He had checked in on Paul's house after the storm to see if there was any damage. Trees were down everywhere, but overall the house was okay. Others were not so lucky. The storm surge from Ivan had flooded many homes, and there were dozens of tornadoes that ripped apart many local businesses. Glad to be far away from the new hurricane, Graham and the guys drove to Seaside Heights, New Jersey. There are two piers in Seaside Heights, Funland Pier to the south and Casino Pier to the north. Besides being a crowded amusement park during the summer months, the Casino Pier is home to a talented, tight-knit crew of local surfers. But this morning the summer crowds were gone and Ryan, Paul and Graham were lucky to find the lineup empty. The next morning, Graham left New Jersey and headed back to school in Pensacola. Continuing on their trip to Maine, Ryan and Paul drove north to Long Island, New York. They set up camp on the beach at Hither Hills State Park as the remnants of Hurricane Jean blew across the Long Island coast. The air temperature had dropped into the lower 50s, and for the first time on their trip, the guys put on their wetsuits. After the storm blew through, they headed towards Montauk at the eastern end of Long Island.
Ryan snapped a couple more photos for his portfolio as he and Paul explored the coastline near Montauk Point. With the swell from Gene all but gone, the guys stumbled across a nice little point break at a spot called Ditch Plains. In the summertime, the beaches here are crowded with surfers and tourists, but it was officially fall and all the tourists had gone home. With the peak of hurricane season behind them, the guys left Ditch Plains and crossed the Long Island Sound. With no more storms to chase, they again set their sights firmly on surfing in Maine. Their next stop on the way, Narragansett, Rhode Island.
Overnight, a cold front moved through, and their second day in Narragansett reminded them of a winter day back home in Florida. The air temperature was in the upper 50s, and the water temperature had dropped down into the lower 60s. Here we are, sitting around, no place to go. She said I hadn't had any in three months in a row. I said I've gone much longer than that human contact. Happy with two good days in Rhode Island, the guys were ready to get back on the road to Maine. Now less than 200 miles from the Maine border, they drove out to Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Not knowing much about the Cape, Ryan and Paul stopped in at the first surf shop they could find and met Matt Rivers. Matt sponsors a surf team on the Cape and has owned and operated the shop here since he was 17 years old. He said the surf was small, but might pick up some in the evening when the tide came in. In the meantime, Matt recommended they do some sightseeing. Ryan and Paul rented a couple of bikes and headed out to explore the northern tip of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Before dark, they drove out to Marconi Beach to catch the incoming tide.
With the end of their trip approaching and their goal in sight, the 13 miles of the New Hampshire coastline would be their last stop before Maine. Dear folks, this is the last postcard I'll be sending you before we head back to Florida. We spent the last few days driving the coast here in New Hampshire. We stopped off at one spot and watched a crowd try and serve some small shore break. While waiting and hoping for the surf to build, there's some beautiful scenery to look at here in New Hampshire and plenty of rocks to throw to pass the time. We have to start heading back to Florida soon, so tomorrow we'll be heading up to Maine. I don't know if we'll find waves, but wish us luck. Love, Paul. Early in the morning, the guys loaded up the van for the last time. After traveling through 14 states and over 3,000 miles, Ryan and Paul finally crossed the border into Maine. Heading toward the coast, the guys made their final stop at Higgins Beach, Maine. I guess you don't need a lie 
like I do. Wake yourself up and listen at this time. Cause we're outside. <laughs> oh. That's hilarious, dude. That was cool.